So there are a lot of mechanics when it comes to uh, the Pikmin and of course we're playing this character that's the most important part of the character is all the Pikmin mechanics. So for this episode we're going to be going in depth into how exactly Pikmin work. Now the most important stuff about Pikmin is that th you can have three Pikmin at a time with Olimar and the Pikmin pluck order is the same every time. It is not randomized. The order is always red, then yellow, then blue, then white, then purple. And this order persists even when Olimar dies. So if you die after plucking a blue Pikmin, when you respawn, you're gonna pluck a white Pikmin next. And this is actually key, because sometimes you wanna like set up a pluck order so when you die, you can start off the rig lineup on the next duck. Whenever you use an attack with Olimar that uses Pikmin, it will cycle the next Pikmin in the lineup. And when I say cycle, I just mean move the lineup forward one Pikmin. The only exception to this is down smash, down smash uses two Pikmin for the attack, so that will cycle the lineup by two Pikmin. It is also worth mentioning that uh, Pikmin order can get a bit messed up when you're playing for various reasons. The way you're using the Pikmin attacks, the opponent hitting you, or the Pikmin. And there's no like guaranteed formula to know how like, getting attacked and playing Olimar is going to mess up the Pikmin lineup. But that's why it's your job as an Olimar player to kind of recognize what the lineup looks like and when the order is messed up. Let's talk about Whistle. Whistle is vital to Olimar's game plan. It is a frame two armor move. So that means it lets you escape combos faster than air dodge, which is frame three for Olimar and most characters. And since it's armored, uh, you still take the hit, you still take the damage, but it is so vital for Olimar getting up a lot of otherwise true combos. And it has less end lag than air dodge. I mean, you can whistle through a lot of attacks and then punish the opponent for hitting you. The whistle organizes your Pikmin. So let's say your Pikmin are far away from you or the orders mess up or even just want to cycle your Pikmin life a little bit. Whistle does all that. It pulls Pikmin back to you, whether they're like off stage, far away, whatever. Uh, if you want, if your Pikmin's out of order, it resets that order and lets you like go to the next one. So you're going to be constantly the wrong Pikmin and using whistle when playing Olimar. Now, talking about the Pikmin themselves, uh, Red Pikmin. Red Pikmin, it's, it has high damage and high knockback. It uh, has pretty good kill power as a result. It is good for combos. It is pretty much an all rounder Pikmin. It also has a fire element, so it absorbs fire based attacks such as snake grenades, rob neutral air, which can be very vital in some matchups actually, because that means you can like latch a Pikmin on someone and they can't get rid with fire attacks, or you can throw it through the fire attack. It has average HP, uh, and also has an extra bonus. It has less knockback on throws than other Pikmin, which would sound bad, but that actually gives you access to bigger combo windows uh, compared to other Pikmin. So generally, you're not really upset to have this Pikmin in your lineup, but because it's not really specialized, you also don't want this Pikmin in your lineup. You're a lot of times gonna be dumping this Pikmin as soon as you can to replace it with more uh, specialized Pikmin. Yellow Pikmin. Yellow Pikmin are the segment's Pikmin in my opinion. They have average damage and knockback, but the thing that makes them so good is that the hitboxes on yellow Pikmin are massive, about 25% bigger than the other Pikmin hitboxes, which makes them amazing for spacing, makes them safe on block, um, even makes them better for combo extensions because you have just a bigger hitbox to work with, makes them amazing for two frames as well. Like, pretty much yellow Pikmin are just always amazing. You always want a yellow Pikmin in your lineup, they are the second best for a reason. Uh, added bonus to it is that it's electric, which gives it two properties. One, it goes through electric based moves. A really notable example of this is versus Pikachu. You can go through T-Jolt and even you can't kill pick yellow Pikmin with neutral air, which is huge in the matchup. Secondly, the attacks are electric element, which means they actually have a bit more hit stun and shield stun than normal, which makes your combos better, which makes you move safer on block than normal. And really, it's just, the only time it's not get Pikmin is when you really want to get kills because it doesn't do that particularly well. Blue Pikmin. Blue Pikmin are, generally speaking, the worst and most situational Pikmin. They have average damage and kill power. Um, 
What makes them special is that their grabs in particular are very strong. So you can kill with blue pigment up throw, even forward throw, and sometimes even back throw with blue pigment. The throws also just do a lot of damage. Like blue back throw does like 26 or so damage. They have a little bit more HP than most pick, making them a little bit hard to kill. So you really only want these Pikmin when the opponent is at throw kill percents. Otherwise, they're not the safest Pikmin. They're not the most damaging for combos. They don't give you any extra benefit for spacing. Uh, they do have water element, but that's like the least useful element of all the Pikmin because there's very few water element based moves in the game. White Pikmin. So the white Pikmin are very interesting and usage of these Pikmin is kind of what separates the good Olimars from the great Olimars. So the white Pikmin attacks have lower damage and knockback than the rest of the Pikmin. You aren't gonna get much damage combo on these. In fact, they don't even combo that well because it's such low damage. It has very low hit stun. Um, they don't kill. However, what makes these Pikmin so good is when you throw them with a side B, the side B has a really far and fast angle. It's more straight than the other Pikmin. Um, and it's almost like full screen on FD. It's really insane. And the latch itself does a lot of damage. I think each latch is like 5 or 6 damage compared to the average of 2.5, I think. So, a lot of times if you hit someone with like a latch to a Pikmin and do a combo, the latch itself will do like an extra 30 damage. So you're going to use these Pikmin a lot for mind games of like, are you going to pressure people with the Pikmin toss? Or are you going to try comboing into the white Pikmin toss using another Pikmin? Or are you going to use it more aggressively? Or are you going to kind of hold on to it for your opening? There's so many mind games as to when and how you use this Pikmin. And that's why it's like a really big like determiner of how good you are with Olimar. These Pikmin also have longer grab range than average. If you do a side by side, you'll see that it's I don't know the exact numbers, but it's very noticeable. You can like outspace people with like one Pikmin, like Pikmin Paper Grabs, for example. Uh, these Pikmin, however, are very fragile. Most moves will kill these Pikmin in one hit, so you gotta be very careful with them. But as a result, they're also very easy to cycle out of your lineup. Uh, you're generally not gonna keep white Pikmin in your lot for too long. Finally, this is the reason you're playing Olimar in the first place. The purple Pikmin. The purple Pikmin are insane. They have extremely high damage and kill power. You will kill people below 100% easily with purple Pikmin smashes, back air, up air, you name it. And because they have so much damage output, they're also really safe on block. Purple Pikmin back air, as an example, is minus three on block, which is insane. And if that's not enough, these Pikmin also, their side is a little bit different. They are they don't latch on the opponent. They are a hitbox. They cause knockback. So that's really important because that means the opponent can't just run through purple Pikmin toss and hit Olimar as like a trade. They actually have to respect this move. It also means that they attack as that purple is coming out. It can clank the purple, causing them to put an extra leg. You can kill people off stage with this. You can combo off purple Pikmin toss. You can do so much with that. And the goal of Olimar is pretty much to get purple Pikmin. Like, you're gonna want to get two purples at a time if you can. Even one is good, but two is like the win condition. Two is when you can go crazy because you can play very aggressive with the purple Pikmin toss, or you can play more passively. You can focus more on the toss or on the really strong attacks. And these Pikmin have more HP than the other Pikmin, making them surprisingly hard to kill. Like, most people aren't gonna be able to kill a purple Pikmin in one attack unless it's like a strong smash. The only weaknesses for this Pikmin are that the side B range is shorter than average to compensate for being such a good tool, and the smashes and grab have less range than normal. Uh, you'll notice you can't really like grab people with purple Pikmin unless you like read them shield and point blank, and you wanna go with like sweet spot up smash. These sweet spots are very small on purple Pikmin, so you have to be like right in their face for that to connect. Otherwise, like they're just, they're overwhelming. Once again, this is why you play Olimar. This is your win condition. You want to save these while you use these properly. You want to basically, once you have these in your lineup, you really want to like amp up your play style to frustrate people. Other Pikmin properties that are important, but probably a little bit less important than the ones we talked about. The Pikmin can be killed uh, during their attacks or when they're too far from Olimar. So let's say you're doing an aerial. The Pikmin can be hit during the aerial and killed actually, although it's very rare for that to happen with aerials. Um, 
What happens left though is when you get hit as all of them are and the Pippin gets knocked away from you and the opponent can kill it. Let's say something like a wolf dash tech hits Olimar. It might hit Olimar and then the Pikmin right afterwards because Olimar gets sent too far away. Or let's say Olimar gets thrown and then the throw causes collateral damage that hits the Pikmin somehow. And then the Pikmin can die that way. Or even if you just throw a Pikmin, um, the Pikmin is too far away from you and suddenly it can be hit. So, you have to watch out for that. Make sure Pikmin survive. Also, smash attacks are really easy if people are challenged. Smash attacks have item priority. So basically, aerials cut through Pikmin smash attacks like butter. You have to space your smash attacks around aerials to beat them. Uh, most of your smash attacks are meant to cover the ground more so anyway than the air. But keep that in mind. It also makes all of them are really vulnerable to pressure though. Because smash attacks lose to like attacks. And even some ground moves will like punch through the smash attack or clank but not put the opponent in much lag. Olimar uses side beat hissy punch shield. The Pikmin is actually invincible. So you can basically pressure people with like machine gun fire like Pikmin toss on block. Especially with purples. If you have two purples you can just literally throw purple non-stop. And it is a continuous shoot of pressure where the Pikmin are invincible. However, if you miss the Pikmin toss or if the Pikmin latches onto the opponent, the Pikmin are vulnerable to attacks and be killed. Uh, this is especially important because if you're uh, throwing Pikmin and whiffing them, the opponent can use that as an, a chance to kill problematic Pikmin, like let's say blue at kill percent or yellow Pikmin for never. Also, when you latch Pikmin on the opponent, they can kill them. However, when opponents hit Pikmin, there's hit lag. So if you latch a Pikmin on the opponent to try to kill it, that's more time for you to punish when they use the attack because of all the hit leg it creates. So it's kind of a double-edged sword of like, they kill it, they can use the hit leg to extend moves, but it also gives you a bigger window of punish and pressure. As an extra bonus to Pikmin being latched on the opponent, uh, latch Pikmin on the opponent causes weird properties uh, on their leg. It makes their jump spots slower, it makes them have more landing lag, and it even makes them more hit stun uh, during combos. So, for example, if you have two Pikmin on the opponent, at lower percents, the Loft characters can be jabbed across the stage until the Pikmin uh, stops latching. And this scales with the more Pikmin you have. So, one Pikmin leg is as much as three. Uh, another bonus to Pikmin latch is because of the hit stun hitting the Pikmin, uh, combos aren't as effective on Olimar. Like, if someone hits you with like a throw combo, but there's a Pikmin on them. During the aerial, there'll probably be too much lag from the aerial to actually follow up afterwards. So combos get cut short or are more whistleable with a uh, Pikmin on them. So basically, you really want to like get a bit more aggressive and take more risks when you have Pikmin latch on the opponent because of all these status effects as a result of the latch. You cannot use Pikmin uh, when they're too far away from Olimar, even if there's an arrow on them. Uh, and the distance for this is pretty generous. But even if there's an arrow on them, if the Pikmin is too far from Olimar, uh, it is unusable. So it used to be, if you tried using a Pikmin, that was supposed to be next in lineup, but wasn't available. Olimar are just whiff an attack. Now, if you use an attack with Olimar and that Pikmin isn't available, which you can see an arrow on their head to determine that, it will use the next Pikmin in your lineup that's available. So let's say you throw a red Pikmin um, and then your blue is next, but you whistle so the red's supposed to be next. When you do an attack, It'll use the blue because that's like with Olimar where the red isn't. Uh, now, a very important trick to Olimar is to recognize this and a lot of times to run forward to pick up Pikmin. You'll see this happen a lot where like I'll throw a purple Pikmin and then I'll run forward to the purple so I can pick it up and use it again for something. And the final weird property of Pikmin is that they have different weights and this matters during your upbeat. Uh, so the heaviest Pikmin is purple, then red, yellow, and blue are medium weight, and white is the lightest. And basically the heavier weight you're carrying when you up B, the less uh, time you can up B, and the less speed you have during up B. So it significantly affects your up B distance. If you have three Pikmin, for example, try up Bing, you're not going that far. But if you have one Pikmin, you're going pretty far. So commonly, Olimar is a third Pikmin when off stage before recovering just to make it so they can up B much farther and faster and basically mix up their recovery significantly. If you get stuck with like all three Pikmin, you're just a sitting duck, especially if it's all purples.